This video is brought to you by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. We're headed out on the Pocomoke River with a Maryland DNR Fisheries Service crew, where the focus is on largemouth bass. We'll spend time with Maryland's tidal bass experts as we venture up and down the peninsula. And the way they're conducting this largemouth bass survey, it's kind of shocking. Then, some stocking. So how are we gonna get them in the water? Uh, a little dip net, and I'm okay. gonna pick up a few and pass it off to you and let you just kind of blow them down in the water and just turn your net over. Hand okay. delivered. Hand delivered, that's it. Plus, to get to the big race in the Big Apple, these athletes will have to go through Delmarva first. We are all in for this half marathon. Right now on Outdoors Delmarva. Look at that! Woo! Woo! Scales are closed! No more fish! This is Outdoors Delmarva. Presented by Gateway Subaru. And now, here's Mike Parker. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Mike Parker. Captain Willie Dykes will be stopping by in just a few minutes. And as we begin the show this week, folks, we're here along the beautiful Pocomoke River in Worcester County, just outside of Pocomoke City, where I just got done spending the morning with a crew from the Maryland DNR Fisheries Service. And they're out here aboard a specially equipped watercraft conducting a largemouth bass survey. It's important to take stock of these fish this time of year, collect data on the population and its health to aid in future stocking and conservation efforts, setting creel limits and such. And I'll tell you what, as you're about to see, the method for bringing these fish to the surface is kind of shocking. If you've never spent much time on the Pocomoke River, I'd recommend you see it by boat. But on this morning, the boat I was going to be spending time on was like nothing I'd ever seen. Equipped with special gear, including a generator, this Maryland DNR research vessel has a specialized task designed for electrofishing or electroshocking. The metal boat itself completes a circuit with the electrified anodes at the end of these poles sending a pulsing field of electricity into the surrounding water, which has the effect of stunning certain types of fish, and in this case, targeting largemouth bass. Another small one. What we'll do is we'll get to a site, we'll uh, measure some environmental variables like uh, water clarity and water temperature. Temperature 17.94 degrees Celsius. Conductivity is 107, salinity is zero. And then we'll start up the generator on the boat. We'll survey the shoreline for about 250 meters, which is the length of our site. Jerry, will, who's driving the boat, has a GPS back there with a map. and tells him where, when we're on the uh, start point. He'll record when we begin sampling, and then he'll record when we stop sampling. He'll, uh, he'll drive the boat right along the, the shoreline, often punching into the shoreline uh, with our boat. And we'll, uh, at that time, we'll be uh, sending electricity through the water to stun the fish. Our station started right back there. We're working, kind of systematically working the shoreline. And we're seeing this electrofishing gear is most effective in shallower water, and Pocomoke, as many know, is pretty deep. So Joe will hit the pedal when, we, when the drop-off starts coming up. So we're sampling from out here up to the edge of the shoreline, basically, or as shallow as we can get. That's a bass right there. Nope, it's a bass. So we got another bass, small adult. He goes into the tank. After just a few minutes out on the water, you can see the effectiveness of the electroshocking method. And for researchers, it's simply a means to an end. As the fish are stunned, uh, they tend to float to the surface, 
and that's, that way we can pull out the largemouth bass from the water, put them into our boat. We've got a, a live well that has a lot of water in it. We'll put the fish in there and they'll uh, recoup uh, for the rest of the site, and then at the end of the site, we'll uh, measure and weigh the fish and then release them. Another nice adult largemouth. Close to 13 inches, um, 331 millimeters is its total length. We're going to put them in the weight tub here, get a mass estimate. 524 grams. 524 grams, so that's probably about a couple of pounds. They, they're not showing too much fight right now, which is great for us. He's not trying to wiggle free. Um, the water temperature is a little cold, so it kind of slows down how fast they actually move. So it makes handling them a lot easier, but he does, he's doing just fine um, and uh, should be ready to catch in a couple minutes by the next bass angler rolling up on the water. Of course, even while trying to tailor the amount of electric current to the largemouth specifically, there are other species of fish in the Pokemo, fish that also turn up from time to time, like this long nose gar. They have a primitive type of scale on them. It's almost like an armor. It's a bony scale. It's actually made out of a bone-like substance. They're very abundant here in the uh, Pokemon. It's called a, a hog choker. Very similar to what everybody likes, something about flounder. Big channel catfish. This is the fun of a trip like this because we're after largemouth bass. That's what they're trying to study. But, you know, you get a nice sampling of what's in the Pokemon. But, I mean, basically, <laughs> if you've ever stuck your finger in a light socket, you know, it's not going to knock you to the ground usually, but you, you will sit there and go as a kid, you know, it's happened that's to right. just about everybody. I'm yep, imagining he's right. getting the same sensation, but he's going to be fine in just a minute or two. That's right. Although years of research have shown that fish that are shocked recover quickly and have even been caught by anglers just minutes later, each sample fish is still treated with care and returned safely to the river. And then we release them. A day on the Pocomoke like this provides plenty of educational moments. And for DNR, it's data that can help them make some big decisions in the future, ultimately framing future plans that will affect the species itself and anyone else who has a stake in the future of the largemouth bass population. Nice healthy fish, no problems, good color, nice weight, good size, uh, could be the next lunker at the next bass tournament. Maybe in a couple years. <laughs> so just a beautiful day to get out there and enjoy the Pocomoke River and do a little research here alongside the Maryland DNR. Eventually the data we collected here today will be compiled into a report that will help researchers ultimately manage the fisheries across the state even better. And that includes stocking these targeted species like largemouth bass. So coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, we'll head to a stocking location just a little bit to the north. But first, did you know? If you watch the show often, then you know we've done some largemouth bass fishing from time to time. And one of the groups we fish with only fishes on a certain day of the week. Which day is it? The answer, when we come back. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism, Shorts Marine, Shooter's Choice, Sean Mann Outdoors, and Goody's Marine. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know? Is it going to be one of those days? Regular viewers of our show will know that several of our largemouth bass fishing adventures have been alongside members of the Wednesday only Bass Fishing Club. These die hard anglers will fish just about anywhere, but it's always in the middle of the week. Did You Know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. All right, Willie. Well, we're back now, and I guess this week you could say we're sort of featuring the largemouth bass. 
and we're definitely spanning the length of the peninsula, at least north and south. We started down in southern Worcester County just a few minutes ago, down along the Pocomoke River, where I joined those guys from Maryland DNR doing a little electro shocking. Well, now for step two of this process, we've taken about a two hour drive north here to Kent County, Maryland. Yeah, we're just off the Sassafras River back there. We're on Turner's Creek. And we're going to see some of that uh, information that's gathered in that research actually resulting in fish in the water. We're here with Joe Love from Maryland DNR Fisheries. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Captain Willie. How you Hi. doing? How about telling us a little bit about where we are and what we're doing this morning? Oh uh, yeah, love to. We are uh, we're on the Sassafras River, uh, specifically Turner's Creek right here. We're at the uh, end of Turner's Creek Road, and we're going to uh, release some young bass to the water. We're gonna we're gonna stock them. Uh, these these fish are about four to six inch, inches long. Here we go. I'm going to open the slope because these guys have a tendency to jump. They were uh, spawned in our hatcheries and um, they've been living there for about six or seven months now, growing up, eating, uh, eating well, getting fat. And now uh, we're getting ready to release them to the, to the river here in hopes that they uh, become part of the population in the sassafras and maybe in two or three years become part of the fishery for largemouth bass. So how are we going to get them in the water? Uh, a little dip net and I'm okay. going to pick up a few and pass it off to you and let you just kind of lower them down in the water and just turn the net over. Hand okay. delivered. Hand delivered, that's it. TLC. All largemouth bass. Okay, we don't want to keep them out in the air too much. Now the water here in the Sassafras River may seem a little murky on our underwater camera, but according to the experts, the natural instincts of the bass will be kicking in right about now. <laughs> the tricky part about raising largemouth bass is keeping big ones from eating the smaller ones. But experience shows that stocking bass around this size will give them more than a fighting chance at avoiding many other predators out in the wild. We normally stock the little bass at one inch. Now this year was a little different. We changed over from uh, fingerlings, which is like the one inch fish, to advanced fingerlings. Most of these guys in here are six inches or better. Now these guys basically have a, uh, a jump on, on it since they're so big. They can swim fast. Uh, they don't um, school as much as the little ones. So if like a predator species, a, a striped bass or something, or even a larger largemouth, pickerel, whatever, see a swarm of little bass or see a swarm of fish, they'll come up and, and munch. So, uh, munch for lunch, so. <laughs> you know, where I grew up, uh, they used to have people that would get in inner tubes and they used to call it putting your fanny in the Susquehanna. <laughs> well, today we're, we're putting bass in the sassafras. And that's it. There you go, Willie. Hey, Joe, we took a look at the uh, shocking, the gathering and the research done on the tidal bass down in the Pocomoke, and now we're stocking here in the Sassafras. And what, uh, what part in the cycle of the bass research is, uh, are we looking at right now? Right. Uh, so the, the, survey, the, the surveys we do every year on all these, on all these rivers, uh, again, are a part of how we understand the, the fishery. We get some feedback from the anglers. We get some feedback from our survey efforts. And when there are problems with the fisheries, uh, we, we, we try and try and fix them as best as we can. And some of the most important ways that we're learning we can protect the fishery is, is in um, talking with anglers about handling strategies, particularly if they're in tournaments. Um, live well maintenance is very important. Keeping fish in, in, in good quality water when they're motoring their boat around the river is very important. And uh, that just improves survivorship of the adult bass. And if they do that, then that helps protect reproduction in these systems. Great deal. Thanks a lot, Joe. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. I'm glad to hear it. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, they're trying to get to the big race in the Big Apple, but these athletes will have to run through Delmarva first. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards.
This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. You know, Delmarva, with its generally flat terrain and lack of hills, makes for great cycling and running, and that attracts athletes from all over. Well, I'm standing here in front of the Wicomico County Youth and Civic Center, where a recent event rewarded some of the competitors with a very special prize. Pick a number. Any number. That's right, pick a number and then wave bye-bye because in just a few minutes, this pack of 180 runners will be just a blur. Okay, this is gonna be a great day, guys. We got a cool front that came through, so uh, it's gonna be perfect running weather. And today, the conditions are just right for this 13.1 mile race. I'm totally excited. Yeah, it's a great day. The weather's perfect. It's nice to do a, a, home, a home run, you know, right here locally and don't have to travel and just drive up the road and get out and do a half marathon. Because today's race right here in Wicomico County is a qualifier for this year's famed New York City Marathon. And the top three finishers will get a chance to run in it. Running on a flat course, of course you're going to have a faster time. This is great for, for runners' personal records. And soon it's time for the start. The average runner can run a half marathon in about two hours, so three competitors will have to finish well under that in order to get the chance to run with the big guys. Ah! And it's on. Now, once again, we've commandeered an outdoors Delmarva chase vehicle to take you out on the course. Orange traffic cones show the way along this pleasant suburban trek with rehydrating stations along the way. We start to get word that three runners have broken from the pack and have to burn a little gas to catch up. And after a while... It must be fast, huh? Yeah, it must be super fast. We catch up to the third place runner. Up the road a bit is Enos Benbow, who's running comfortably and all alone in position number two. But he's hot on the heels of this guy, John Pigott of Williamsburg, Virginia. And the only thing ahead of him is the cyclist who's volunteered today to help lead the way and act as a traffic lookout. At age 47, John is running an amazing five minute, 40 second per mile pace. Today's finish is inside the Wicomico County Civic Center, and with the arrival of the cyclist, we know the first place finisher is about to make his entrance. And with a time of 1 hour, 14 minutes and 23 seconds, John Pigott is the first to qualify for this year's New York City Marathon. Just minutes behind is Enos Benbo, a Delmarvin from Georgetown, Delaware. And finishing third is another local, Lee Walker from Salisbury, Maryland. Congratulations, guys. All three have a chance to run the Big Apple. I just wanted to get a good run in. Winning the race was okay. Uh, it's just more like for training purpose for a marathon. But I've been wanting to do New York City, so if it could, I could end up doing it. The other competitors crossed the line one by one, with today's victory knowing that they pushed themselves to exceed their limits running with the big dogs and getting stronger with every stride. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, the shotgun season is just weeks away for hunters in Delaware. We'll get you geared up with our friends at Shooter's Choice. Outdoors Delmarva will be right back. This is Outdoors Delmarva. Presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Mike Parker, back here again with our friends at Shooter's Choice. Always on target with all of your firearms needs, located right here on Route 13 in Dover, Delaware. All attention is turning to hunting, and in Delaware, well, you know the shotgun is king, whether you're deer hunting or waterfowling. Joining us right now to talk about some new products is Beth Parsons with Shooter's Choice. Hey, Beth. Great to see you. First thing I'm seeing right here on the wall, 
a new name here at the shop, Absolutely. Beretta. Tell yeah. me about it. We're now an authorized Beretta dealer. This is your Beretta uh, Model A400, also known as the Extreme. Um, it's got this really nice camo on, as you can see, for waterfowling. But the great thing about this gun is it not only has the buttstock recoil here, it also has some recoil here in the stock, plus inside recoil pads. Oh yeah, that is just a super comfortable gun. And the thing about Beretta, well, it's a name people recognize and a product that people trust. All right, premium gun, you're going to want some premium ammo. And Black Cloud is one of the most popular names you'll find here at Shooter's Choice. And Beth, this Beretta Extreme takes them all. It does. It takes two and three quarter, three inch, and three and a half inch magnums. You know, guys like me who grew up rifle hunting for deer always thought that when you went to a shotgun, you were going to give up some velocity. But Beth, the way they make these slugs these days, that's simply not the case. No, it's not. This SST, it's actually an expanding slug. Um, it'll go through the deer and it'll do a lot of damage inside and hopefully drop the deer in you know, a matter of feet. They all look a little bit different from the Hornady to the Remington to the Federals, but you can make that choice when you come into Shooter's Choice. And of course, you never want to head out in the field for deer without sighting in and getting a good feel for your gun each season. So here at Shooter's Choice, we love this indoor range and it's waiting for you. And don't forget Shooter's Choice, now an authorized Beretta dealer. So you've got that option too. Beth Parsons, thanks for having us here at the shop. Thanks for coming in, Mark. All right, well, when you're getting ready for deer season, they have you covered here from muzzle loaders to shotguns to all the accessories in between. All you need to do is get out in the field. Before you do, stop by and see our friends here at Shooter's Choice on Route 13 in Dover, Delaware. Always on target. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Delmarva viewer pictures are sponsored by Shorts Marine. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice, Sean Mann Outdoors, and Goody's Marine. Well, it's time now to take a look at some of those videos and pictures sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. We love to see the youngsters getting outdoors, and how about twin brothers Hunter and Jacob Von Arks from Delmar? Jacob dropped this beauty of a 10-pointer. Al Wright from Harrington sent in this shot of an eight-pointer he harvested during the early Delaware muzzleloader season. And Cecilia Stafford checks in with a trail cam pic near her house in Sussex County. It looks like a couple of friends just chatting over dinner. And don't forget, next Saturday, November 3rd, is Customer Appreciation Day at Gateway Subaru. Mike and I will be there in person from 11 to 1. We'll be handing out some cool outdoors Del Marva gear. We're looking forward to seeing you. So until then, for my partner, Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Del Marva.